Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today is grade six, unit six, lesson 17. Uh, practice problem review. That's what we're doing. Question one, a car tr is traveling down a road at a constant speed of 50 miles per hour. Complete the distance, or complete the tables with the amounts of time it takes the car to travel certain distances, or the distances traveled for a certain amount of time. All right, well, two hours, if we're going 50 miles per hour, two times 50 gets us 100 miles. One and a half times 50 would get us 75. And what are we doing? We're taking our 50 miles per hour and multiplying by our t time to get to our distance. Now, if our distance is 50, that's one hour. 50 divided by 50 is one hour. If our distance was 300, we could take 300 divided by 50 and get six hours. So what are we doing to go the opposite way? It looks like we're taking our distance and dividing by 50 to get to our time. So write an equation that represents the distance traveled by the car for an amount of time t. What seems to me, as we're looking at these, that distance equals the 50 miles an hour times the time. And here, our input, which is in this case the same as our independent variable, that is our time. Our time is independent versus our output, which is our dependent variable here. That, in this case, is our distance. Our distance depends on the time. Now, another way, just so you know, to write this d divided by 50 is 1 50th d. That's another way to write that. And so time, t, was our independent variable, and distance, d, was our dependent variable. As we continue on to question two, the graph represents the amount of time in hours it takes a ship to travel various distances in miles. Write the coordinates of one point on the graph. What does the point represent? Well, let's just pick, for example, I like this point here. Now that point, if we look at our x-axis and our y-axis, the coordinates here, if we use our x-axis first, we're looking at 100, comma, look at the y-axis now, What does this point represent? Well, it represents 100 miles traveled. You can just pull it right from the axis itself. As you can see, we have miles traveled in, well, what amount of time? Four hours. Now, if we want to figure out the speed in miles per one hour, a couple different ways of going about that. You could just look at the graph and go, well, this is one hour. And so as I look, it's 25 miles per hour. Now, just out of curiosity, if you were to take 100 from our miles in our A question and divide by 4, do you still get 25? Well, yes, you do. Now, there are two possible equations that you can write that relates time uh, to, take, uh, to travel a given distance. The quickest one is to take our distance and say, well, I'm going 25 miles per hour, so our distance is going to equal 25 times our time. But what if we wanted to solve for time? Well, that's going to be time equals 1 25th times d or time equals d 
divided by 25. So a couple different options there. Question three. Evaluate each expression if x is 1, y is 2, and z is 3. Let's start with a and substitute these values in. We're going to have 7 times 1 squared minus 3. In order of operations, we have to take care of the exponent first, so 1 times 1 is 1. 7 times 1 is 7. And then we can take 7 minus 3 to get 4. So our answer for part A is 4. And B, if we substitute 1 in for x, we have 1 plus 4 to the third minus our y is 2. Solve the inside of the parentheses first. 1 plus 4 is 5 to the third minus 2. 5 to the third is 5 times 5 times 5. 5 times 5 is 25. That times 5 is 100. 25 minus 2. Subtract, and you get 123. So B is 123. C, substitute in 2 for the Y, times our X is 1, plus 3 to the third. And so we look inside our parentheses first. We need to take care of the exponent first. So 1 plus 3 to the third is 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. Now we need to finish simplifying the inside of the parentheses. 1 plus 27 is 28. And 2 times 28 is now 56. So our solution for C is 56. As we look now at D, we're going to have 7 minus our y is 2, plus our z is 3, all to the second power. Addition and subtraction are on the same step of order of operations, so we'll work it on the inside of the parentheses from left to right. 7 minus 2 is 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. And 8 squared is 8 times 8, which is 64. So d is 64. What about e? We have 241 thousandths times our x is 1 plus 1 to the third power. Now technically we need to do exponents first. So we have this 241 thousandths times 1 plus 1 to the third is 1 times, um, yeah, 1 to the third is 1 times 1 times 1, so 1. Then we take care of the multiplication. 241 thousandths times 1 is 241 thousandths. Add 1 to that now, and you get 1 and 241 thousandths as your solution for E. Continuing on, find a solution to each equation in the list that follows. Not all numbers will be used. 2 to the x equals 8. So we're looking for, well, how many times do we multiply 2 by to get to 8? Well, 2 to the first is just 2. 2 to the second would be 2 times 2, so that's 4. Not there yet. Multiply by 2 again, and you do get 8. And so that means 2 to the two to the third. And so we'll have... Uh, I can't write. Where can't I write? x equals 3. There we go. Now, 2 to what power equals 2? Well, as we just mentioned, 2 to the first power is 2, so here x equals 1. x squared equals 100. So we're asking ourselves what number times itself is equal to 100. No, we're not dividing by 2 to get 50. We're not dividing by 2 to get 50. What number times itself is 100? Well, that's going to be 10. 10 times 10 equals 100. So x in this question equals 10. Now, same question here, but just a little bit of a different spin. What number times itself equals 1 hundredth? Now, my strategy for you on this one would be to say, set up the fraction bars and take each little piece independent of each other. For example, what times what is equal to 1? 1. 1 times 1 is equal to 1. 
And we just asked and answered this part of it. What number times itself is 100? And of course, it's the same as just above, and it's 10. And so our very colorful answer there, x is going to equal 1 tenth. Now, x to the first power equals 7. Well, what to the first power is 7? That's just going to be 7. And then 2 to what power times 2 to the third is 2 to the seventh? It's a great question. 2 to the third is 2 times 2 times 2. Well, how many more 2's do I need to get to 2 to the seventh? Well, I need, that's 2 to the fourth, 2 to the fifth, 2 to the sixth, 2 to the seventh. That's four twos there, and so x is going to equal four. In g, two to what power divided by two to the third is two to the fifth? Well, there's a kind of neat way of writing this out here. Two times two times two times two times two is two to the fifth, right? And we're dividing this by two times two times two. When you're doing that, technically what's going on here is 2 divided by 2 is 1, 2 divided by 2 is 1, 2 divided by 2 is 1. And so how many more 2's do you need to get back up to 2 to the 5th? You need 1, 2, 3 more. And so how many 2 to the, I'm sorry, how many 2's do you have on top here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this would have been 2 to the 8th divided by 2 to the 3rd equals 2 to the 5th, and so x is going to equal 8. Our last question, select all the expressions that are equivalent to 5x plus 30x minus 15x. Well, if you were to divide a 5 out of all of these here, if I divided a 5, you would end up with 5 on the outside. 5x divided by 5 is x. 30x divided by 5 is 6x. And the minus, 15x minus, or divided by 5, would be 3x. Again, that does match A. Now, in B, they're trying to see if we're dividing an x out. So what happens if I divide the x out? Well, I'm left with a 5, a 30, and a subtracting 15. B works. C doesn't work because B does. We divided an x out, but we only divided an x out of the 5 here. They forgot to divide the x out of the 30 and the 15, and so C doesn't work. They tried dividing a 5x out of D. Well, when you divide a 5x, you'd be left with 1 plus... 6 minus 3. And that's exactly what we have in D. In E, it appears they tried to divide a 5 out, but since A worked, E doesn't work because they did not divide a 5 out of the 30 or the 15. So you have A, B, D. That's it for this practice problems review. Good luck.